At Gallery Aquatica, we believe that the key to promoting sustainable reefing practices is to inspire and educate the next generation of reefers. And so for this reason, we've partnered with a number of schools to help them with their marine science studies. So today, we're going to show you how we maintain a high school marine science lab. We're lucky enough to be doing this monthly service during the school holidays. So that means that we've got a lot of space and we don't have to worry about any classes coming in and interrupting us servicing the tanks. But it does mean that the tanks haven't really been maintained very much in the last week or two. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. First of all, we'll look at the tanks and we'll show you how this marine science lab is set up. So this is the main tank in this marine science lab and it's an 8 foot by 2 foot wide by a little bit less than 2 foot deep. So it's a really easy to access tank. Now we've got the three radions run, lighting this tank and their spread is, is quite good and it's certainly giving some really good growth to these mother colony corals. The sump is a basic refugium system. So we have the NIOS skimmer on the left, flowing through to the refugium. Now we have actually started doing some work. We've drained out this tank, so it's running a little bit low at the moment. But you can see that this prime LED is really growing the keto excellent. And this is one of the main reasons why this system is so stable. We've got a Tico 1000 chiller, an auto top up system, there's an MP40 wave maker and a Gaia 150. So this tank is used for mother colonies. The colonies in this system are taken out to be fragged in the next system which we'll have a look at. So this is the fragging system and so corals are constantly in and out, they're fragged up, they're put on racks and so this is really a tank that gets a lot of work done in it and on it. So at the moment there's only a few corals, there's not a lot of frags um, but it's a bare bottom tank and one of the things that we really need to look at today is the amount of detritus that's settling out on this bare bottom tank. The tank below has got coral sand in it and this was put in for the purpose of some of the types of invertebrates we had in this tank that really do appreciate the sand. Now there's another marine system just to the left of this one. So let's have a look at this. This is also used for a variety of things. Now the main thing that we're trying to uh, keep in this tank is a variety of invertebrates such as there's a coral banded shrimp, uh, we've got different types of sea stars, echinoderms, there's a reef lobster, which we'll see if we can get him out. Where is he? These are really cool. There he is. And below we've got two slightly larger tanks. Uh, we've got, I think this one's being used to work on peppermint shrimp and their, their use in aptasia control. And this one uh, is just the big hermit crab. So it's really handy to have a variety of tanks running on a system that uh, allow us to do different things in this marine science lab. There's one more tank that we'll have a very quick look at. It's a freshwater tank and again it's really just used for a variety of things that come into it and out of it and just so that we've got at least one freshwater tank if there's ever a need for it.
So now that we've had a look at all of the different tanks in this marine science lab, it's time to start doing some maintenance. And the first thing that we really need to do is a good solid gravel vac on this eight foot tank because I can see there's a lot of algae and most likely a lot of detritus trapped within the substrate. So I've just noticed some filamentous algae and I'm using the good old pinch and pull method. So I'm pinching off the algae and letting it go down the, the hose, the siphon. But uh, I'm just looking down on this turban, this scrolling yellow turban, and it is just the most sensational shape. It's really, really cool. Such a, such a tight scroll. Looks great looking down on it. It's, uh, it's always a different angle when you look down on your marine tank see some things you wouldn't otherwise see when you're looking through the front of the tank. We've just finished the gravel siphon on the eight foot tank and we're going to start to siphon out the detritus from the frag system. I'm only doing small uh, drops in water at this point because I'm going to use the big hose and drain it right down. I really want to maximize the size of the water change but I'm not going to start draining until I've got the next system sorted. So I'm going to siphon the detritus out of this bare bottom tank and when I start to siphon you'll see exactly how much is in here. It's quite incredible. So all of that detritus has settled out in the last few weeks and so I'm going to go over the whole base of this tank but this is where it's thickest. I'll have to write this fungi which must have fallen off the rack but this is you know a good sort of 15 mil thick in some places so there's a lot of detritus very important that with a bare bottom tank you ensure that you don't have these detritus piles in the tank for too long. So it's time to start the big hose draining. I'll just put it in position and then I'll run downstairs and start the siphon. We're lucky with this tank and this lab that we've got quite a, a head height to work with, which means that when we drain with the hose, it drains very quickly and we'll be able to drain the big tank and the smaller tanks all within the space of about five or 10 minutes. So I'll go get this siphoning. I'm going to move the hose from this tank onto the next system and by turning off the valve I keep the prime which means straight in, open it up and it will continue to drain. So I go through and I drain out a small amount out of the majority of the tanks and as soon as we have drained as much water as we need I'll run downstairs, hook up the pump turn it on and fill them all up as quickly as possible. So whilst I'm waiting for the other tanks to drain, this is a good opportunity for me to do a couple of little jobs and I'm going to quickly clean the protein skimmers uh, before we start to fill the tanks back up again. Right, on Niles first. It's also great being a marine science lab to have this sink right in the middle of the whole thing because it means that we can very easily our skimmers, we can drain into the sink if we need to. Um, it's a really handy thing to have in a marine science lab.
We're refilling the tanks now and one of the great things about this candy cane system that I use is that we have the valve that makes it very easy to turn it off to move in between systems. So this first tank is almost full, looking at the drainage point. So I'll turn off the flow, I'll catch the dribbles, move it down below and start to refill this tank. And from here, we'll move into the next system and then we'll finish off with the eight foot tank. So we're on the final tank and this will only take a few minutes to fill up and then we'll turn on all the uh, pumps, the wave makers and get everything running and just do a bit of a clean up. You can see that we've got some bubbles coming out of our hose and the reason for that is downstairs the water tank is just about to run dry so it's sucking in air which for me is pretty impressive because it means that we've used all of our water. So we've calculated the amount of water that we've drained out of each of these tanks perfectly. We've just about completed our service on the marine science lab at this school. And I'm just doing the final check overs to make sure that everything is turned on and working. Uh, this is something I do every time I finish a service on a tank because the worst thing that can happen is that something doesn't get turned back on that's critical to the tank. So I've checked the chiller, it's working. I've checked that the return pump is pumping well, both wave makers, the skimmer is on and skimming where we want it. The auto top up is actively uh, working. So everything is as it needs to be. And this is particularly important given the fact that this is school holidays at the moment and this tank won't be looked at every single day like it would be when the school is in. So uh, we've finished our, our service and hopefully when the kids can come back from their, their holidays, they'll have some nice clean tanks with all the uh, fish and corals nice and healthy just when they left. And hopefully it'll all be here for them to be inspired to become marine biologists of the future and to practice sustainable reefing practices. So that's our video for today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning about how we maintain a marine science lab. And I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.